This video is supported by patrons like you. If you'd like to become a patron, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt Jarbo. Just a dollar per month is a great way to say F you to the access media. Okay, so last week Watchmen premiered and the episode was met with very mixed reactions. I liked it quite a bit. A lot of other people didn't really care for it and that's perfectly fine. I'm in on this show all the way, especially after this episode because I have like way more questions then I do answers, but I definitely got some answers. So uh, if you caught the last episode, you know where it ends, right? The, sh uh, the chief of police is strung up by a tree. He is dead. There is a 108-year-old man in a wheelchair claiming to be the one to have done it. And Angela is very much in the space of, what the hell do I do here? So first thing she did, she grabbed the guy, took him back to her lair. Uh, she chains him up, right? And she's like trying to get him to tell him who she is. He kind of refuses to say you know he doesn't really tell her anything uh that, that's satisfactory she of course gets the phone call that the cops have found the sheriff's body or the, the chief chief's body so then she has to go out there and deal with all that but what i like about that moment is we actually got a flashback of white knight which is when the cavalry three years prior or at least a few years prior had in fact stormed 40 homes of Tulsa police officers with the intent to kill them and their families as a way to send a message. And they killed so many people, including uh, her partner. Now, her partner had three kids who are now orphans. This is when she adopts the three white kids that we saw in the first episode. And now we know exactly uh, how they came to be a family, which is very fascinating. So the kids don't know that she's a cop still. Her husband knows that she's a cop and that she's Sister Knight. And that's really about it. They keep it safe because of the act that allows cops to wear masks after the events of White Knight. So now we know why the Calvary was gone for a couple years. And we also know uh, that uh, anyone who's associated with the Calvary ended up getting uh, uh, basically kind of like they're, they're in a database or in a list sort of thing. Cause that would be uh, Doyle, the family, the officer, her partner who died, his kids, their uncle shows up who wants to see them. And Angela like won't let him in and basically buys him off, you know? And she's like, how would, how would they feel, you know, knowing that, you know, that they're, that their uh, uncle who is a, uh, you know, Calvary uh, or Calvary, uh, you know, adjacent. He's, he's, he's has known associates that are this, this terrorist organization. And so they get rid of him, but he, he's going to come back later on. Cause it's the actor who was in um, supernatural, the guy with the ball cap, I forget his name. Uh, and so of course, after that, she heads over to, uh, well, they go and, and, and they, her, you know, looking glass, this is, this is where we get a little bit of a little bit of insight into Looking Glass that I like because Looking Glass is explaining to her uh, how the chief died, right? She asks, did he suffer? You know, hoping the answer to that is no. And and no, Looking Glass just goes right through it. He's like, no, he suffered greatly. He was alive when they strung him up uh, on that tree. He was absolutely alive. He felt it. And the thing with that, though, is uh, she's like, man, you're a cold son of a bitch. And he just goes like, and that, if that's the case, then why am I crying under this hood? Showing that not only is he very you know, callous in the way he speaks, but he very much feels a lot of emotion. And Tim Blake Nelson is amazing. I love that guy. So I'm really happy to see, like, I want to see more from him because I kind of feel he's like, he's going to be bringing a lot to the table down the road. And I think it's going to be great to see him really kind of dive in on it. Uh, from there, they head over to, this uh, this encampment where they that they do have known Calvary members, and uh, what is it? It's like a, it's like a Nixonian or Nixonite encampment. So basically, here's how it works out. In case you don't remember, at the end of the graphic novel, uh, there was a panel that showed that Robert Redford was going to run for president in 1988, uh, besting Nixon during his third term, which is exactly what happened. So uh, Redford then became president and has been president now for 30 years almost. Actually, no, over 30 years. He continues to be elected president. And that, of course, uh, is there people out there who who are still fans of Nixon, who still I idolize Nixon. And they are the ones that in this case are kind of like the redneck adjacent or like the poor people, poorer class, things like that. For some reason, I still don't quite know what it is with Nixon that they were, I mean, I don't know there's, maybe there's some history there. I'm not too sure of, maybe there's some history there. I'm not aware of about Nixon, uh, in, in, in his background and in, in, in regards to like why racists would find him appealing. I don't, uh, I don't know. Maybe we're going to find that out. But anyway, they go in there, they go to this encampment, the cops show up, basically beat the crap out of everybody, uh, to, to round him up, to take him into questioning, to find out which person is the one who killed or who knows who killed, 
uh, you know, the, the chief. And, and we don't get any more on that information because it goes back to Angela. Um, and, uh, and, and Angela ends up, well, when she talked to, to Will, the guy in the wheelchair, who we know, by the way, uh, is the kid from the beginning. Obviously we do find out a little bit more about him, which I thought was kind of cool. His dad was in world war one. Uh, and his dad had a leaflet, uh, that was written by a German commander, uh, for colored troops that was basically saying like, you should just abandon, uh, the troops. Uh, we, we, we don't hate colored people here in Germany. We have, we have many businesses in, in like Berlin owned and operated by, by, by colored people. You can be here. You're fine. And, and that was their, their propaganda ploy in hopes of getting people to defect. And for some reason he still had that. And that's what he wrote that note, watch over this boy on, which I still want to find out more information about that as to where exactly uh, it all kind of ties in together. So that's going to be something fascinating. Um, and uh, so then anyway, he, Will says to Angela that the chief had skeletons in his closet. Now, one of the things I noticed from last week's episode is when the chief was getting ready to leave before he was killed, there was a shot that showed a photograph of him and what looked like his father uh, or grandfather, perhaps. But his father, whoever the adult male was, I'm assuming it's his father, uh, very much had uh, police uniform on. So showcasing that it runs in the family. But there was a guy in the first part of the episode that we see one of the guys in the KKK hood that we get a good look at his face. And he looked kind of like the dude in the photo. So I was wondering is the guy, one of the KKK members involved in the riot in the beginning, was he the chief's father? And that was a picture of them when the chief was a boy and, and the father was older. That's, you know, something that we haven't seen explained yet. But when Angela ends up going to the chief's wife's house in order to pay her respects, she faints and then ends up running a uh, an investigation into the chief's closet to see what he had. And she finds, very easily finds, by the way, KKK hood, but it has the deputy star on it because in the Tulsa riots, the KKK, the police of Tulsa deputized KKK members, right? That actually happened. So that's definitely a play on that, which I thought was really interesting that they went that route. I was like, oh, wow, that's, oh my God, that's crazy. Like I'm really, really interested to see what's going to be happening next. Uh, from there, she goes back to the to the to the bakery and Will has gotten himself out of handcuffs. He's making eggs, you know, and they're talking about it. And more or less what we find out at that point is that uh, and Will maybe isn't isn't super aware that hey, I'm sure at this point he has to know that Angela maybe is on it. But uh, he does make a comment. He says, like, you know, I have friends in, in high places, which is a weird thing to say. But but right as that happens, she gets a phone call from the Memorial Institute that ran the DNA that she had provided for Will. And it showcased that he had two living descendants. And one of them is Angela because that's her grandfather. So now he doesn't know, but she knows that that's her grandpa. But now she's just all sorts of confused. Doesn't know what the hell's going on. Goes and puts uh, the grand uh, will in the car. And as soon as she puts him in the car, one of the Archimedes ships flies overhead, drops a gigantic super magnet on top of the car, takes it and goes right the hell away. And I thought that was funnier than hell. I was laughing my ass off because will didn't look scared. He just kind of gave her the smile. Like I have friends in high places and I'm also hijacking your shit. That was great to me. I thought that was fantastic. I really got a kick out of that. So we also got a little bit with Osmandius now getting a bit more into what he's up to. And I thought that the, 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 that the servants from we saw in the first episode uh, were robots. I don't think they're robots. I, I think they're clones. I don't quite know because he kills one of them and he burns him alive. Uh, kind of like the, uh, what was the, the, the Nolan movie? Um, you know, the one with Hugh Jackman and, and uh, Christian Bale. I forget what it's called right now, but very similar to that, where it's like they kill one of them and the other one appears because of they're able to create that duplicate here. He's got some very similar to that. We don't quite know what, but he's also somewhat obsessed with with Dr. Manhattan's creation, which I'm trying to remember why I have to go back and read the graphic novel again uh, to maybe get a better understanding of that. But it's just been a while. But what's funny was he actually had a guy in full on blue makeup complete with the blue dong painted, which I thought was really funny because that just, you know, makes me think back to Dr. Manhattan from the movie from 10 years ago and how nobody expected blue Wang to pop up. No one expected it, but it did totally did. So you've got that. And, and I don't know what he's up to yet, 
but I'm really kind of curious exactly how it ties into a few things. So, so for one, in the first episode, when we see Dr. Manhattan, Dr. Manhattan destroys his palace, his palace or a palace or the palace or whatever looks a lot like Osmandius's palace or castle that we see him at. Then uh, Topher, Doyle's son, who was adopted by Angela, when Angela goes to tell him that uh, Judd, uh, the chief is dead, he is working on this magnetic or this this statue, this this metal statue that looks exactly like Dr. Manhattan's palace on Mars and Osmandius's castle. And it's floating like he's got telepathic or sorry, telekinetic abilities or something. I don't know what the hell like there was nothing asked about that. That was even like no one even remotely drew any, any like, oh, what's happening here? Why is this floating? Like, we don't know. Is this presented as a, as, as a normal occurrence in the show? No freaking idea what's going on. So I, I don't know. Like, I am super into wherever this is going. This feels like it's turning into a solid mystery. Uh, this turns this, this looks like it's going to start really ramping itself up. The Trent Reznor Atticus Ross score is awesome. I want the soundtrack to the show. When it drops, I'm going to get it. Uh, and yeah, I really, I really appreciate uh, this episode really kind of fleshed a few things out. And at the same time, really, really just kind of opened the door a bit more. And I don't know where the things are going to go next. But man, I am, I am, I am definitely, definitely interested. But I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Let me know down in the comments below. I will talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic night. Thank you for watching. And thanks for supporting via Patreon, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one, and peace out.